All right, thank you for joining me on Instinctive Addiction Archery today. Got a really good one here for you today, guys. Straight up, we're getting ready for hunting season. Pretty much everybody is. And I've had more messages than I can count this week come in on the same subject. So I wanna address that today. And hopefully, as always, do something to help answer some of the questions and help you along the way to get settled in and shoot your best, okay? Whatever style that may be. Now, guys, I recently switched back to split finger shooting. I recently switched back to split, um, and I'm loving it, okay? It's not for everybody. I shot three fingers under for a long time, shot great, enjoyed it, whatever. But there are certain things that I really favor when it comes to shooting split finger. Uh, not trying to put one over the other by any means because that's not the point guys it's what works for you but that being said let's just say if you're a guy that maybe wants to try shooting split you want a little bit quieter shot out of your bow which you will get uh, and i know guys there there are people that argue that say there's no sound difference whatsoever out of a well-tuned well-tillered bow well guys i've shot every bow under the sun and this week alone, literally hundreds of messages from customers all over the world. And that's the, just the God honest truth. All over the world with lots of different bows. Not our bows, but whatever kind. And they're telling me the same thing. They watched the last video. They tried split finger. They could not believe how much quieter their bow was. It's because of finger contact. I don't believe it's anything other than less finger contact on the string, so you get a little bit quieter shot. That's the only reason that I'm doing it, okay? Now, adjusting to shooting split finger from shooting three under, yes, there is a slight, slight adjustment. There's not a lot, but there's a little bit. So the question that come in this week overwhelmingly was the same, and I felt like I had to do a video today to address that and try to demonstrate what I'm doing and what's working for me, okay? Doesn't mean it's gonna work for you because your face may be different than mine, but what works for me, all right? Shooting split finger has allowed me personally a very, very rock solid anchor, a really consistent anchor point, if you will, that I can shoot the same over and over and over every single time. And the adjustment going from three under was very minimal, very easy, okay? Uh, as I shared in the other video, all I did, guys, was change my anchor point slightly, very slightly, but it worked. It, it caused me to instantly hit where I was looking, and shooting split forces me to be purely instinctive, not shooting split vision in any kind of way, which there is nothing wrong with, because guys, it is super accurate if you choose to shoot three fingers under, as I have the last several years, your peripheral is going to pick up the position of your arrow, whether you try or whether you don't try. It's there. You cannot help but see where that arrow's at, and it's okay. It's, it's still instinctive shooting, but your peripheral picks up on the right and left of the arrow, especially at distance. But when you shoot split, you can't do that. As I shared in the other video, you cannot do that. It is strictly instinctive. You, you just can't do it because the arrow is just not up close enough to your eye to do that. So you are more or less burning a hole into what you want to shoot with your eye. And when you come into an anchor that works for you, you will hit where you're looking. Okay, so how do you do that? All right, I'm going to show you guys what has worked for me. I've got my little 58 inch passion. I'm sorry, vapor, <laughs> three-piece takedown carbon vapor, 58 inch. I've got several bows, guys, and I shoot all of them the same. I've got a passion. I'm shooting the same. I've got a 62-inch vapor, and I've got a 58. Um, I love all of them, and I can shoot all of them identical. Doesn't make any difference which one I go in there and grab. I can shoot them the same because I've got my arrows bear shaft tuned. Everything's good. I'm anchoring in the same place and the bows are hitting identical. It does not make any difference. And one of the questions that came in was, did you have to move your knock when you went from three under to split? The answer is yes, but no more than an eighth of an inch. 
almost unnoticeable. The arrows actually flew good. But on a bear shaft tune, I found that I dropped my anchor, uh, my knot down a one eighth of an inch, which got me closer to the half inch mark where I was shooting five eighths. Okay, that's where I'm at. Arrows are flying wonderful with 250 grains on the front. Great and fine. Everything's a done deal, okay? So, I wanna to demonstrate today how I anchor shooting split finger. What works for me, okay? And it's very consistent. Number one, I find that I shoot split finger much better with a canted bow, okay? Not shooting the bow vertical, but canting the bow. It opens my sight window and it allows me to more or less come into my draw very consistent and all I'm doing is looking at what I want to shoot, okay? So what I do when I hook the string, and I found something else, guys. I found that when I take a slightly, slightly deeper hook shooting split versus when I was shooting three under, I had an extremely light hook on my string because of string noise. That's really why I did it and getting a clean, crisp release. I would lightly, lightly hook that string. Well, now I'm hooking it. I'm not going crazy with it, but I'm hooking that string. And what that does is that helps me to be able to dig that middle finger into the corner of my mouth. And my index finger pulls into my cheekbone right here, right here. Just like Fred Bear. That's why I shared Fred's picture on the last video because I looked at how he did it, many others, and it looked like a really good place to start and try to get my groups down where they needed to be. Like I said, when I first went from shooting three under to split, I naturally grouped about three inches high every time. And I adjusted very quickly by simply coming up with my anchor from here to here. Just very little, I mean, almost a, a finger's worth, okay? That's all it was. And bam, they were in there. And I also found that bringing my elbow up and bringing my shoulder blades together and using the same back tension that I was shooting three under really makes sure that I'm not going to shoot high, okay? So there's a little bit of difference between the two, whereas shooting three under, you draw and that arrow is really close to your eye. It's really, really close to your eye and it's almost a plane. You can't help but see where that arrow's at. Where when you shoot split, and you can't, the arrow is, is seemingly way further down than when it's three under in your peripheral. The arrow looks way, way lower, so there's no way that you can really use it at all to do anything with the target. It's purely instinctive shooting, okay? But it does feel great. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I do in this. Now I've got my little hunting bow set up. This is my 58 inch carbon vapor, guys, okay? a 58 inch carbon vapor. I'm shooting 46 pounds. I'm running Eastern tra Axis Traditional 500s with 250 grains on the front. And there again, I've got a 62 inch vapor and I've got a 56 inch passion longbow, the one piece. And I shoot every bow the exact same. It does not matter which bow I grab, they all shoot the same. And as I shared before, knock change what do you do to change to get your bow set up before i go shooting and showing this i'm going to share this because this question has come in along with all the other ones pertaining to the anchor point what do you got to do to your knock if you wanted to switch from three under to split what would you have to do well i found again that i dropped mine one eighth of an inch i went from five eighths to around a half no more than that in my arrows bear shaft tuned perfectly okay and yes you need to do that you need to bear shaft your bow just like you did shooting three under same deal get them bear shafted perfectly the rest is all in your anchor okay it's done all right so what i do guys i hook the string more than i did before i get a little deeper hook on that string it allows me to really get this finger into the corner of my mouth just like this guys can't the bow this is my anchor this this top finger is pulling into the cheekbone this one's in the corner of my mouth with my elbow up 
That is my anchor. Bow canted, sight picture window open. Works like a charm. It does. I'm gonna shoot it a couple of times. Like I said, this is my hunting setup. And that's what I've been doing is trying to get set up for this year's hunting season to be the very most effective that I possibly can. Quite a shot and most accurate without having to think about anything. No mental thoughts about the process. Strictly shoot and kill what I'm after, okay? And this has really helped me tremendously to be able to do that, guys, because it's taken away a lot of the mental picture the pre-draw picture has left my mind. What do you mean by that? Well, when I was shooting three under, I was very mentally aware before I drew the string of anchor, pull through, uh, line up, back tension, everything. I really don't now. I really don't. I really naturally now just took my string because my anchor is going to come in the same every time. I've shot it for a week solid, literally hundreds of rounds, and now it's there. I don't think about anything but what I want to shoot. And if I do what I'm supposed to do, it's going to be there. So I'm going to show you guys this. Shooting split finger, bear shaft your arrow, make sure that it is flying good with your glove and don't shoot too big of a glove i'm gonna tell you guys that's a big big secret uh i shoot the bear paul classic gloves love them and buy them one size smaller if you order one because they stretch okay you don't want any loose glove a loose glove uh i can't tell you about a tab because i don't shoot a tab but as far as a glove goes a loose too big of a glove will affect your air flight and it's impossible to get a bear shaft tune with it it's impossible Sometimes it's better to do it with bare fingers because there's nothing to interfere with that and lie to you. So anyway, once you get your bare shaft done, then it's all about hitting your anchor so that your arrow impacts where you're looking. Not hitting high, not hitting low, but simply hitting where you look, okay? So guys, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna shoot a couple there at the uh, little red. I got a little simulated little lung there in that, that old doe target because I've shot the lungs plumb out of it all these years but anyway i camp the bow and i love to camp my bow because it opens up my sight picture window and all i'm focused on is hooking that string getting a good hook where i can control my bow you've got to be in control of your shot and your bow you cannot let it control you you've got to hook that thing and come into that anchor i mean really pull into that anchor and lock in and when you do and you're standing at your spot bam it's there. It's just going to happen every single time. So, here we go. Just like that. Got the edge of it. And, yes, the bows are extremely quiet. Shooting split. They're very, very quiet bows. Even with quivers loaded and all that. Can't the bow. Stare at the spot. Almost busted my knock. You can sit here and shoot groups like that, guys, over and over and over and over. As many times as you want to do it. I'm not hitting high. I'm not allowing anything. I'm simply looking at what I want to shoot, and I'm shooting it. Because I found the anchor that works for me, which is right here. Whereas before, I was down lower. Now, I'm up higher with my elbow up, my back tension, bow canted. Boop. It happens. Super easy. And distance has become way easier for me because the trajectory of the arrow shooting split, you will get more distance because of the angle that the arrow is in. I don't know how to explain it other than that, but if you do choose to shoot longer distance, you don't get the arrow drop, especially with heavy point weight and heavy arrows and all that. It's just not as critical, okay? But, whichever method you choose to shoot uh, makes no difference. You have to have an anchor that is consistent, that you will do the same every single time, without changing. That's the one thing that will wreck your accuracy is, is a variance in your anchor itself. You cannot do that. You've got to find that anchor that works. 
So with me, guys, I have found mine. I hook that string a little deeper. I don't ever pull the arrow off. There's no need for that because my fingers are not trying to squeeze the arrow. All I do is just hook it. I simply hook that string. Camp my bow. I've got my hand up here like normal. And when I come in, all I'm thinking about is getting these to touch where they need to touch. That's all I'm thinking about, guys. Right there. That simple. Now, I shot fast. There was no hold. There was no waiting to, you know, to focus. And you can, if you choose to hold the bow and really burn a hole, great. But with me, I found even if I shoot fast... I'm hitting the same spot. It does not make any difference, guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk down here to show you this, this little group we just shot here with my hunting arrows to show you guys what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, the, the consistency of them, okay? So, as you can see, there they are. As you can see, guys, this group, it's all right there, tight. They're all touching, all, all of them touching every time it's it's like so natural and so easy for me and <clears throat> i'm loving it i'm loving it but i hope this has answered the questions that have come in about the anchor point and how to get those groups down because as i mentioned my first couple of shots that i shot split finger with i shot probably this high i shot probably three to four inches high and that was at you know 18 to 20 yards I shot high, but my groups were tight. And I thought, okay, what can I do? If I could get those groups down, man, I'd have it made. Well, all I did was kind of change my anchor a little bit. When I, when I came in, instead of being here, I just kind of came up a little bit and bam, right there where they're supposed to be. So I just started doing it every time the same. And it's become so easy, guys, that I can walk out cold. Cold shot, and this is what matters to me. Walk out cold shot, 30 yards. Look at a 3D animal out here, whether it's on the range at, at the shop or here in the yard, doesn't matter. First thing, evening, morning, whatever, and look at a kill spot on one of these 3D animals and stare at that spot and camp that bow and come into my anchor and shoot it and put one in the boiler cold I'm like, yes, that's what matters to me, guys. That's what counts. No referencing any arrows, no any of that, no, no having to really be conscious of elevation because it doesn't exist. Even running heavy hunting arrows like these, these are heavy arrows. For, for the poundage that I'm running, I don't know exactly what these weigh. I hadn't weighed them yet, but I can tell you now, an axis with 250 on the front is not a light arrow. I mean, it's just not. But... I like quiet, heavy arrows. I like hard hitting arrows. I have a 42 pound, 62 inch vapor that I have set up 250 on the front of some 600 uh, bare bow arrows, same way. And I'm shooting that bow the exact same way and it is deadly, deadly. Light pound, easy to shoot, deadly. But guys, that's what I recommend to you. If you're thinking about trying, shooting split, if you're just thinking about making that switch and trying it, grab your bow and just stare at the spot and shoot you around. If you hit high, which you probably will, simply work on bringing your anchor point up a little bit. Instead of here, it's here. And we're talking this much, guys. That gets that uh, group, gets that arrow hitting at any distance. It makes no difference if it's at 10 yards or 35 yards. It does not matter, guys. It does not matter. You're going to hit where you're looking, and that's the key to shooting instinctive. Now, if you choose to aim, no. No. If you are more comfortable using your arrow in any kind of way to assure that you're going to be on, don't go split finger unless you're, unless you're uh, strictly gap shooting, which you can do, but it will change your gaps completely. So I don't recommend it for instinctive shooting slash split vision over gap shooting or anything else. You know, guys, it's whatever you choose to do. 
everybody has a technique and whatever it is whatever it is that makes you the most accurate that you're the most comfortable with that's what you need to do because you may be one of the guys that says okay i'm gonna try this instinctive no anything no reference in my arrow look at the spot and shoot it split finger and you may go out there and you just cannot get it together you cannot do it okay i understand that because lord knows i was the same way i was the same way i could kill something probably but as far as shooting groups no i was far from it but shooting three under for all these years and shooting a lot has developed my shooting skills and my form to where now I'm able to do it uh, because consistency is the key. I never had consistency. I was a, uh, oh gosh, what would you call it? Uh, grip it and rip it type shooter. Okay, grip it and rip it. You may be on somewhat, but if you don't have a consistent anchor that touches the same every time, and if you don't use the same bank tension every time, and you do not pull through that shot the same way every time, in my eyes, you cannot be a consistent grouping archer. You cannot do it. You might get lucky, but you're going to have some flyers. So I say, guys, just through experience, because I've lived it, I've done it. Shoot what is most accurate for you. If you feel like three under feels better to you, then you shoot it and you shoot it the best you can. If you need to draw where you're looking completely down that arrow and you're using that arrow as a, an aiming tool, use it. Whatever it takes to make ethical shots, you do that. If you feel like gap shooting, pure aiming is your ticket to being on. If you've tried everything else and you just can't do it, there's no shame in it, guys, because I'm going to tell you, a good gap shooter, a good gap shooter is hard to contend with. Hard to contend with because the accuracy is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You just have to know how to judge yardage and know your equipment. Okay? So, with that being said, it's all traditional. It's all good. Do what works for you. But if you choose to shoot split finger, instinctive, hopefully this technique will help you. It'll help you get where you want to be with it, guys. So thank you for joining us today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. As always, we pray everything we do bring honor and glory to the good Lord that is so good to us and gives us more than we deserve. Most of all, our health and the ability to pick these old bows up and shoot them and uh, be the backyard warriors that we are and spend some time in the woods and all the things that we enjoy about shooting bows, guys. It's all about that air flight, man. All about the air flight. So thank you for joining us. Have a good week. Goodbye.